a wonderful world of Disney. Tonight, on the wonderful world of Disney, the conclusion of Kit Carson and the Mountain Men. The year was 1845, and that great mountain man, Kit Carson, his friend, Basil Lajeunesse, and two Delaware Indians, Rennie and Tioga, were about to embark on one of the West's greatest adventures. It began when they made their annual trip to the edge of the frontier to trap beaver. Here's where we split up, divided three ways. Rennie, Tioga, you want the north? How about you, Basil? You call it. South suits me, Kit. It was a hard, rugged life for the mountain men. Before the winter was over, Lajeunesse had been attacked by a grizzly and robbed by a renegade mountain man, Brett Haskell. Only the lucky arrival of Kit Carson in the Delaware saved Basil's life. After nursing him back to health, all four headed for the big summer fur trading rendezvous. Basil got the money back for his stolen furs, but not without Kit Carson's help. Interested spectators were Captain John Fremont, recruiting mountain men for an expedition to California, Ed Kern, his aide, and Randy Benton, his young brother-in-law. Basil saw Randy's melodramatic dime novel about Carson, who was a national hero in his own time. I buy this book, eh? so I can read it to my friend Kit. When they met, John Fremont offered Kit Carson the toughest job of his career. For you, $50 a month as my chief scout. But near tragedy waited for the party in Pueblo when Brett Haskell tried to kill Fremont. <laughs> Haskell escaped to Santa Fe, and a new assignment from General Armijo, the governor of New Mexico, and his aide, Tibor, stopped the California expedition at all costs. But remember, Senor Haskell, we only pay for the elimination of Captain Fremont. Anxious to avoid Armijo's renegades, Fremont decided to leave immediately and send a very disappointed Randy home to St. Louis. But Randy had plans of his own that night. Long after Kit Carson and Fremont had left, he borrowed La Jeunesse's mule. Brett Haskell and his renegades were on Carson's trail too, and Randy would soon discover that finding his hero would not be easy. In a matter of hours, Randy was completely lost in the wilderness. Anything about trading? There's only one way to bargain with an engine. 
Wait here, I'll get the boys. Oh, that capitaine is going to be plenty mad this time, I bet you. You mean to tell me the great tracker Lajeunesse can't even find a 12-year-old boy? Well, I was following Mamuel Celeste. How was I to know he was not on her? We better find him before the captain finds out. Tioga, get the horses. Rennie, you stay by the campfire in case the captain starts looking for us. What do you mean, lost? I give you one simple assignment. You managed to turn this expedition into a shambles. I'll deal with you later. Dismissed. As for you, Randolph, this deceit is very unworthy of you. Bentons and the Fremonts are expected to set an example. I'm very disappointed. But, Brother John... No buts, Randolph. You're going back to Pueblo first thing in the morning. You get out of here. Miss! 
Mr. Carson! Mr. Carson! Carson, you make arrangements to have that boy taken back tomorrow. Well, I don't reckon that's possible, Captain. I can't spare the men. If we said anything about men, one should be enough. The boy's gonna have to stay here, Captain. There's no two ways about it. They're hostiles between here and Pueblo. We just ran into a burnout Shoshone village. Nobody was left alive. Where? A holler from here. Blackfeet? Not likely. The bodies were all stripped naked. Very well. The boy stays with us. Why, Harry, we're going to have discipline around here. And I'm going to see that Lajo Ness and Randolph remember that. sends his compliments and asked me to tell you that he ain't advertising a circus. In other words, he'd like a lot less racket back here. Kid, why is the captain devouring me so? Everybody knows this child cannot cook. This child either. Not much longer, Mon enfant. Not much longer, I promise you. Get the rest of the bands, and that'll be all for tonight. A little touch of tobacco for flavor. Mm -hmm. Bon appétit, capitaine. I don't know if Lajeunesse has been punished enough, but I certainly have. And there are decent meals that you stop cooking. I want you to resume your duty. Be happy to, sir. I'll start tomorrow. What have you there? In your hand. Well, this is my dinner, sir. I've been preparing my own. Oh. Good. Uh, Ed, pull up a chair. Oh, thank you very much, John. Excuse me, sir. <coughs> I ate food that coyotes passed up. I got no stomach for that. Well. That is strange. Coming from a man who has stomach enough to massacre the whole Comanche nation. Uh-uh. You cannot deny it. It is all in here, in words. How you cut them down? One by one. Riding backwards. Where'd you get that?
in California? Nope, not yet. First we got the Sierras there, and then California. How long do you think it'll take? Oh, it's hard to tell. Maybe two, three weeks. Nothing raises sand between here and there. We'll have to go a good deal faster than that, Mr. Carson. We're going to beat the winter snow. through this pass up here. I'm only interested in going west, Mr. Carson, not north. Why can't we take that route? It's too dangerous, Captain. Only one man's actually made it all the way through that route. Jedediah Smith. One man can make it. We can all make it. Why don't you and Mr. Largen and Esther scout the entrance? You ride in a mile or two and we leave tomorrow morning. So far, I don't envy the captain if he's going to go this way. No water, no cover. The only way he's going to get through here is race through slicker and ice and take his chances on getting ambushed. Kid. What? Something moved up there. What an animal. It was a man. do something like that to old Basil now, would you? Kid. Kid Carson. We'll all be. Brazier, you big ox! I was about ready to shoot you when you looked the biggest, compadre. You always was a wild one, kid. Had to tie your feet to give you a haircut. Ah, <laughs> oh, Basil, you old horse. Sorry I had to drop in on you that way, but I thought you were one of them horse types. Engine's been following me along the ridge all day. What tribe? I don't rightly know. I, I thought at first maybe she's shown me. They don't act like any snake engine I ever seen. What you doing around here anyway? Oh, I was following Jed Smith's trail through the pass, and I mislaid a water hole, and my horse died under me. You know, kid, it's a funny thing. Me being a foot and all, those horse styles didn't attack. That ain't like them. <laughs> hey, with you two here, why, we can chase them engines all the way back to Kennedy. Just hold your horses, Jim. Them engines will keep. If you just came through Smith's Pass, Captain Fremont's going to want to talk to you. Uh, all right, Christopher, if you say so. <laughs> Fact is, I'm a mite tuckered anyhow. You know, the bone got so heavy the last few days, I, I made my fleas get off and walk. <laughs> <laughs> Well, sure, you ain't got no fleas. I'll let you take my horse. All right? Hold it. Ours ain't the only horse that's been going through here lately. Like I told you, kid. Them's horse styles. You fellas go on. I'm gonna look around. Watching us from lookout point. Indians that don't act like Indians. It all fits, Captain. That's true. General Armillo involved, he doesn't want suspicion cast on Mexico. Haskell will be waiting for us in the canyon. 
Make it look like an Indian attack. Unless we go through the North Pass, behind his back. Well, that's where you're wrong, Mr. Carson. For Jim Bridger to guide us, there's all the more reason to use Jed Smith's route. Uh -huh. With Brett Haskell waiting to ambush you every step of the way? Mr. Carson, let me ask you a question. What, in your opinion, is the real purpose behind this expedition? I'd say you're being sent to California to find out how well it's defended. And see how much popular support our army gets if it moves in. Mm, that's close enough. So now you know why it's imperative that I cross the Sierras into California before snow blocks the trails. I've got to gamble on Smith Pass. What about the boy? Randy will be your responsibility. I'm sending him the Safeway through the North Pass with you and Lajeunesse. Now, wait a minute. There's a second reason for sending you the Safeway. If anything happens to us, I'm sure it won't. I want you to give this personally to Thomas Larkin, the American consul in Monterey. It contains his latest instructions from the president. We'll wait for you, Mr. Carson, as long as we can at the California border, until the first sign of snow. Well, you best be on your way. You and Lajeunesse take your Delawares and two men with you and leave as soon as possible. I'll give you 12 hours head start. I come up with a short count. That's Jim Bridger in the lead. Carson, Lajeunesse, and the kid, they ain't there. And them Delawares, and there's a couple others missing. Let me have a look. Must have snuck up during the night. Well, that's it, amigo. They took the boy and they headed for the North Pass, thinking it's safe. Well, as I figured, we just shortcut through the hills, nail our hide to the rocks. It is Fremont who is not to reach California. Those are General Armijo's orders. Well, General Armijo ain't here taking the risk. I am. And I give the orders. I speak for the general. Fremont first. I do not want to have to take the command from you. I don't think none of us want that, amigo. Give me that pot of coffee, son. Hold this. Man! There you go. That was our last fire until we reached the other side. From now on, Nobody goes off by himself. Always take someone with you. No noise. The bigger the mouth, the better it looks shut. We ain't got cover like here. We ride by night.
Where are you going, Senor Haskell? Well, I just thought I'd go on down there and have a look around. You're wasting your time. Carson may have gone through already, or gone another way. All the while, Fremont is getting further away. They'll be along. We cannot wait to find out. If they do not come today, we leave. You and who else, Tibor? Me, Senor Haskell. And anyone else who wants to get paid. Another spring for two days. Everything is ready, Kip. Good. Where's Randy? He got his canteen a little bit ago. I said nobody should go off by themselves. Understand? Huh? Huh? All right. Now, you just start walking. I'll be right behind you, understand? a hostage. Ain't much in size, but he sure is worth his weight in gold, amigo. Now, boy, now you got nothing to worry about, as long as you tell us what we want to know. Carson. Get him up here.
Don't let them get away. Hey! What do you think you're doing? There are only six of them. We can take them easily. Not by letting them pick us off as we ride down a hillside. We got the kid and they got to come to us. And then we'll do the picking off. What good is the boy if Fremont is already in California? I say we go now. Hey. <coughs> 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 Next time you give my man orders, amigo, it'll be your last. Just remember that. You know, it's funny, but I don't recall telling you to saddle up, Jake. All right. Now listen, boys. We got the kid, and Carson's got to get him back. So all we gotta do is stay here, dig in, and knock them off one by one as they try. Take your position. We get them now. Not now. That's what they want us to do. We'll pick the time and the place. What about Randy? He's all they got. Can't afford to hurt him. We'll wait. Keep him sweating and wondering. We'll get nervous and beat themselves. Start seeing things in the dark. sign of them. Nothing. They'll be here. The men are tired. Well, if they want to stay alive, they better stay awake. Like a drink too, eh, Nino? Dayoga. 
Dioga. Dioga! I think so. You stay here. Do what I tell you this time, you hear me? Yes, sir. What are you gonna do? I'll walk him down until he's in range. There'll only be time for one shot apiece. And he can't shoot without showing himself. You stay here.
never saw you, mon ami. We were friends. Where we were boys. There is no one to remember now. It wasn't your fault, son. If I had done what I was told, this wouldn't have happened. Now he's dead. Look, son. You can't fret about the past. You can't change it. A man's got to like himself. He's going to mount to hell with beans. Should I say anything to Rennie? I don't think there's anything you can tell him. He knows how we feel. All of us. We got some time to make up. Let's hit the saddle, all right? much game today. We better split up. Yes, uh, I go down there, you go up. Yeah, I figured you'd say that. into this thing. Look like an Indian trap, I reckon. I know it is an Indian trap. Cut me down. Come on. Well, now, don't look like no Utes near. Or Shoshone, neither. Look, I don't care if it was a Chinese that set this up. Just cut me down. Come on. Well, now maybe you and me can do some trading. See that, that book you're always reading. Oh, come on, kid. Couldn't do that to me. I gave a good green of a knife for that book. Well, that was a mistake. For a man who gets into the kind of troubles you do, you ought to always carry two knives. Oh, all right, all right. Now. Thank you, mon ami. Yeah, mon ami, mon ami. Yeah, now we'll see what we can do about this problem yeah. here you've got. Mon ami, mon ami. No, sir. There ain't nothing like a warm fire on a cold night to cheer a body up. No, sir. There ain't nothing like it. If I got my bearings right, Captain Fremont ought to be on the other side of this ridge. I understand how you feel, Mr. Carson. Tioga will be a great loss to us all. Yes, sir. But I'm glad we were able to keep our rendezvous. Something I want to show you. You should have come with us, Mr. Carson. Good water holes, not a snowflake, didn't even see a hostile Indian. Neither did we, Captain. There it is, California. And tomorrow, gentlemen, we march to another rendezvous, this time with history. Captain Fremont liked his style, thought he was the best. They shared every mountain mile, opened up the west. 